Okay. The, the number of practice this week, that's, I, shit, I can't remember. I don't even know what day it is. I think it's Saturday, right? Yeah. Uh, How important has this been this weekend for your defense? Uh, when we finished uh, our scrimmage and met on Monday, that's what I had told the defense. I said I, I felt that this week was the most important week because we had put the building blocks in place. This would give us an indication as where we could go from there, how fast we could go. Because as I mentioned a lot, uh, you know, you, you'd like to be able to, you know, have a breadth of, uh, you know, calls in your scheme uh, to help you. Some that you won't come back to until maybe game six, but the familiarity with a particular call, uh, at least if, if you heard it once or twice and you've practiced it, you know, then, then you can come back to it. Maybe it's an offshoot of a, uh, a call that you're using all the time. So, because uh, uh, you really won't have a chance to really do anything from a standpoint of, uh, anything t totally new or something that you haven't been through until you have a bye week, you know, so you, you're kind of going through that. You, you don't reinvent the wheel week in and week out. You can put some tweaks in here and there, but it has to be something. So this week was really important to build up, number one, consistency of what we did with our building blocks. And then from there, how much more could we give them so that we could, in fact, practice. And today's practice, I know the uh, offense seemed a little bit uh, – down, you know, with a couple offensive linemen out and things like that. But, uh, uh, you know, that two-minute situation is probably as efficient as uh, I've ever seen us uh, be. And uh, as everybody would say here under their breath or maybe even out loud, we need to be better in two minutes. Just when, when you speak of efficiency, is that just the way that those guys responded to the calls and, and made plays, I guess? Or, or... We made plays. The, call, the whole the whole enchilada, right? The the communication, getting the call. You're not huddling up, talking to one another, changing maybe a personnel group if you if you had to on the fly. Uh, the adjustments that were had to be made, you know, uh, uh, three man rush, four man rush, uh, zone pressure, uh, a man pressure, back to a you know three man rush, cover th three deep, two deep, quarters, whatever it might be. Uh, and that's that's what we did. We tried to mix some things in, apply it at the same time to the down and distance situation. We weren't given a specific situation where, okay, hey, it's the end of the half or end of a game, and we weren't given a situation where they needed a touchdown or a field goal. Uh, so uh, the efficiency, just getting the call, getting lined up and going, and then knowing the sticks, first down, second down, third down, what the other team needed, that type of thing. What have you... Uh... Have you seen the Davis Twins operating in this camp, Carlos and Will? How have I seen the Davis Twins operating? Yeah. Uh, better, better. Uh, What's well, kind of interesting, John always brings it up, is that uh, Khalil had uh, tweaked his knee. We, we were hoping that that didn't happen, but obviously it did, and you know he got the therapies back out on the field. But Carlos had been assignment sound for two practices in a row. Khalil comes back, and Carlos blows an assignment. So. You know, bad twin, good twin. I, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. But the bottom line is for these guys that, uh, in order for us to uh, to win and play at a full capacity, we need these two guys to know what the hell they're doing, play hard, be efficient, so that they can just get after. Because that's what we we told them. We, John and I sat down with them during the week, uh, towards the end of last week, and just say, hey, you know what? You know, there's two different games played. There's, there's one up front. And there's one in the back end. Because I can remember that as a, as a running back. When the game was over, we were sitting down at this place, uh, you know, uh, uh, after the game, having a good time and that. And I can hear the, our offensive and defensive line talking. And I looked around. And I said, oh, God, somebody's going to get in trouble. I said, you guys have a fight? They said, no. What are you talking about? We're talking about the game. I go, what game are you talking about? So for those guys, they love that stuff. They love the physical part of it. And that's what, that's what we love about them. But there's also controlled mayhem, right? Again, I think I mentioned that last time. They got to stay within that box, and uh, because as soon as you go off that edge, that's all it takes is one guy out of that 11, and you got a big play. So, so in other words, I mean, they've got they want to go make big plays all the time. Sometimes they just got to do their job. Yeah, no, it's not necessarily a big play. It's just you know, hey, uh, if it's just base defense where they're canceling a gap, you know, uh, you know, it starts with their feet, right? 
you know, a defensive lineman always steps and he basically replaces his hand. And he's got to get his other foot down before contact. And for whatever reason, you, you, can, you watch tape and you try to do it. We'll put you on tape. Right? Sometimes, you know, because of how they're leaning, all of a sudden their step will go to the outside. It's like what? Or they get an inkling of what's going on and, they're, okay, so they're going to flat step. We don't flat step. We take two aggressive short steps into contact. And that, that sounds so mundane, but it is repetitive and it has to be correct in order to be an excellent player. So Coach Riley said this, and the, the Twins are pretty candid about it too, that when you guys have a real issue with them, you call them. You oh, call, them call mom? mom? Yeah. Oh, no doubt. How helpful is she in the, in the process? Like some parents well, are. Well, I don't know. Why am I calling you? mom to begin with? If she's that helpful. No, she's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. She. Uh, it's it's a it's a great family, uh, and uh, you know it's one of those things. You know, mom mom always was that she checked, make sure they were in place, and did this and did that, and then all of a sudden they're not around mom. So so they need to learn to mature, just like any young person going away from home, and just making good decisions all the time. Not that they're they don't make terrible decisions. It's just, you know, instead of hitting the snooze alarm, just get up, get in the shower, and get to where you belong, you know? Do you anticipate him being part of the regular DN rotation, or does he still have some work to do to... Uh, to... We've had some discussions about Deshaun. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of consistency, health, uh, and, uh, you know, overall physical ability, because he's got capabilities, but... Uh, you know, there's, there's no red shirt. He did that last year. So whenever he's ready to go, and I'm sure it's a long season, right? Uh, one game at a time. It's, it's like a marathon. You've heard probably coach say that to you before. But uh, he'll, he'll be on the field because yeah, he can help us. I mean, he, he's a good-looking rascal, and uh, he, uh, he's improved a lot. His, his biggest thing, pad level. You know, once again, when you incur an injury, and then return, it just doesn't go back on. There's a physical aspect of it just for that particular body part that takes time, and then just the training to be able to improve pad level. That's a big deal for him, pad level, because he's such a big guy, just learning to play low. He came in you know, with that knee, so therefore he had now developed leg strength you know, and all those types of things. But he, he, he is a good football player, and he's going to be an excellent football player for us. Sorting itself out, who, who that third guy could be. Uh, yeah, but uh, we, we're not really ready to. Do, this Saturday, the scrimmage will be big. You know, we want to get two full graded live situations. Uh, once again, you know, all hands on deck. You know, all hands on deck. You know, if we got to go to the bullpen, we'll go to the bullpen. Uh, you know, so, but, but it is, you know, uh, I think the one guy that made a big leap this week and do not, you know, jump to conclusions, <laughs> right, don't jump to conclusions, but the guy, I'll, I'll, that way I can give you some information, uh, the one guy that took a big leap this week was Lamar Jackson. He really did. But now what has to happen is he has to get up to Division I Big Ten speed. And I don't mean 4-4, four, 4-3, four, 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 I mean just how fast things come at you and then the physicality of play. Do you seem to know what you're saying by mentioning his name no. publicly? No. No, see you you're a troublemaker. <laughs> no, I didn't say I didn't say that. Because right now right now Bose uh, would be the would be the third corner. Right now. That's what he that's what he's been. Uh, Eric Lee was a candidate to be the third corner, but Eric Lee's down right now. Right? So really in the food chain, right, if you just write him down. You know, a guy like he, uh, Boodle, the Smook, right? They're they're b below that. I mean, and they need to work their way into that. We're not going to hand anybody anything, but at the same time, we're going to put the best guys on the field. I just mentioned Lamar's name, right? So that everybody here knows that he's made great progress this week, right? That's what I said. Is that also true of Alex Davis? Alex Davis, golly, oh, he's come out of nowhere again. We talked about that earlier, that, that, that week being a, a big week for us. Uh, he had a great something, – something went on with him this week. He, uh, he had a couple pass rushes that, uh, that were pretty outstanding. Uh, Neville, 
Now the dude's seven foot two, right? He's got long arms. And uh, Alex Davis had one one hand in him as he's coming off the edge. And and even Neville was having a hard time getting his hands back on Alex's body. I, I that was crazy. But, and then, but the thing that's pleasing about him, we know that that's the first thing he's going to do. He's going to shine as a pass rusher. But he's played the run much better. He's played the much run. This kid's learning, right? One year of high school football, and altogether now, this is his third season of playing, and this season hasn't even started. Hey, Coach, I wanted to, uh, BTN was here yesterday. Yeah. Right? Uh, Big Ten Network. And so their analyst, Jerry DiNardo, was giving his thoughts after after watching your guys' practice, and here's what he said. Based on what I saw today, I would say going to a bowl game would be a successful year. I don't think they're ready right now to challenge for the Big Ten West. I don't think at the end of the tour we'll consider them one of the better teams in the West. So I would say a winning record and a bowl win would be nice. Does that surprise you that that would be the reaction after practice? And what is your guys' overall goal? I love Jerry DiNardo. Uh, I almost went to work for him one time. We had a nice Italian dinner at a nice Italian restaurant in Bloomington. Uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on getting ready and make, making sure that we beat Fresno State in the first game of the season, uh, even if we've got them beat and there's still one second on the clock. We're going we're gonna to fight tooth and nail. Then that's all we can do. Our goal, our goal is to win the national championship, right? Before that, you're going to win the conference championship. Before that, you're going to win the West, right? And then before that, you're going to win games one through 12. 12? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it's, it's what is said. I mean, can't do anything about that. Good for him. That's a good observation.